Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Funeral Home Talk with Anai. I figured for this episode, I can give you guys a background story as to how I was introduced into the funeral industry. That's one of the top questions that I get anytime anyone meets me for the first time and hears what I do for work. So let's get right into it. I want to say I was a sophomore or a junior in college, and I was doing a an internship at the probation department in Los Angeles. And I was very close. I became very close with one of the supervisors there. And he told me, he said, hey, I really like how you carry yourself. I like how you speak to people. And you obviously got the hang of how we do things around here. Do you mind training all the new interns as they come in? And I said, sure, why not? No problem. Cool. So I met this girl for her own protection. We'll call her Maria. I met this girl named Maria. Very, very nice, sweet girl. I was training her a couple days. As she was making her exit, she told me, she said, hey, um, I wanted to see, you know, by any chance, are you looking for a job? At that time, again, I was a student and I was driving an avalanche. So as you can imagine, it would swallow gas like it was nobody's business. So I told her, I said, I mean, if it's part time, I'm in since I'm a full student at the moment. And she said, no, no. Yeah, it's actually part time and it's family owned. My grandparents own it. And I said, oh, well, what is it? What kind of business? And she said, it's a funeral home. We're looking for a funeral home receptionist. And I really like how you speak to people. And I looked at her like she was crazy. I said, um, no, I mean, I'm OK. I, I don't I don't mess with the dead. I don't I don't do the dead. I don't talk to the, I don't do none of that. And she said, oh, God, you're one of those that are more afraid of the dead than the living. The living are the ones that can hurt us. The living are the ones that can turn their back on us. And I said, yeah, you know what? I enjoy getting backstabbed by the living. And, you know, we kind of laughed it out. The next day came around and she brought an application. She said, look, think about it. You don't have to deal with the bodies. You don't have to dress the bodies. You don't even have to look at the bodies. They're kept in the fridge all the way in the back. You would be all the way in the front in the reception area, taking calls, guiding people where to go to view their loved one. That's pretty much it. Think about it. Let me know. I thought about it for like 20 seconds and I said, all right, I'll fill it out. Filled out the application. I told her, here you go. Give it to your grandma. Tell her to take her time when scheduling an interview with me. Sure enough, the next day I get a call from the general manager for his protection. We'll call him Mr. Smith. Hey, Anae, this is Mr. Smith with so-and-so funeral home. I heard you're looking for a job here. I said, yeah, I'm amazed. I'm so excited. Cool. Can you come in tomorrow for an interview? Sure. The next day came around, went in for my interview. 20, maybe 30 minutes long. I told him, I said, listen, I don't have any experience. I I wouldn't know how to act if a body, you know, just jumped up on me. You know, kind of make them, make them, I made them laugh and, you know, kind of broke the ice in a way. So, like I said, interview was 20, 30 minutes long. I left. I said, oh, I didn't get the job. You know, typical, oh, we'll call you if anything changes. Okay, cool. Tell me why I get a phone call on my birthday. Which, by the way, if any of you are wondering, my birthday's coming up, April 23rd. Well, anyways, I get a call on my birthday. Hey, Annie, this is Mr. Smith with so-and-so funeral home. I just wanted to congratulate congratulate you and let you know you got the job. Yay, how exciting. I'm ecstatic to start working in silence because, you know, they're all dead. And he said, you know, don't worry about it. I know you have like a little fear going on, but it's okay. You don't have to deal with them. I'm sure Maria already shared with you. I said, yeah, she did. He said, you know, can you start on Monday? Again, it would be part time. So you would just be here from like 8 to 12. I said, yeah, no problem. Thank you so much. And, you know, Merry Christmas. So Monday came around. I'm walking in. My hands are sweaty. You know, I'm super, super nervous. I walk in. Tell me why the first thing that I see in the hallway is a body just laying there in its casket, chilling. 
I look at the lady behind the reception desk and I freeze. And she said, oh, hey, you know, are you Annie? E? And I said, yeah, hi, how are you? And she said, I'm good, I'm good. Welcome. And I'm like, oh, thank you. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. And she said, oh, again, for her protection, my name is Gloria. I'm the manager here. And I said, oh, hi, Gloria. You know, yeah, I'm kind of freaked out. I'm sorry, you know. And she said, look, you don't need to worry. It's just a shell. We're going to roll her into the viewing room. So technically, the way that a funeral home is set up, it's like a house. It has a hallway. It has rooms. And each room in the funeral home is considered a viewing room. Plus, you have the chapel. The chapel normally is used when you have a big family. When you know that you have a big family coming for a viewing or even a funeral service, that's what you would use. That's where the body would be. So in this case, they were rolling that body into a viewing room. And she said, look, I'm extremely busy right now. Do you mind sitting behind the desk? All you have to do is just answer the phone and say, we'll have someone get back to you as soon as possible. If anybody comes in, you press this button, it pages me upstairs, and you're good to go. I'll come down and take care of, you know, the family. I looked at her and I said, wait, you're going upstairs and I'm staying down here with the body right behind me? She said, don't worry, it's okay, you'll be fine. It's just the shell, that's the way you gotta look at it. No, lady, it's not just the shell. What if she gets up? What am I supposed to do, hit her with a bat? Because her family already paid the services. Like, come on, this is weird. Anyways, at that point, I was already there. I made the best of it. At the end of the day, I went home. I said, this isn't for me. I walked into my room and I said, oh my God, what did I get myself into? I heard nothing but screaming and crying. There was a body right behind me. This is insane. I can't. I just can't. So as the days went by, I stayed. I stayed. I said, you know what? Mama didn't raise no fool. I'm going to stay. I'm going to, you know, thug it out. As the days go on, I met the embalmer. So basically, embalming means it preserves the body. So it's a, I wouldn't say it's a technique, but it's done through the main artery. So what you do is you kind of poke. Again, that's not the correct vocabulary, but you poke the main artery and you drain out the blood. As you're draining the blood, there's this fluid called, and I know I'm going to mess it up, formaldehyde. So what it does is it preserves the body from basically from decaying any faster. And it also kills any bacteria and any diseases that you were carrying at the time of your passing. So I met the embalmer. We'll call him Steve. I met Steve, very nice man. And he said, hey, you know, welcome. How are you doing? Do you need anything? I know I spend most of the time in the back. Please let me know if there's anything I can help you with. And I said, yeah, actually there is. Can you make sure when you stab the main artery that you're like really getting deep in there just to make sure that they are really dead? And he just, he lost it. He started cracking up and he said, look, it, they are. Once I, you know, do the process of embalming, there's no coming back from that. And I said, okay, cool. Just, you know, d double checking here because that that's too much. And he said, look, the way you can lose fear from encountering a dead body is you can start by touching their feet. And I said, I'm not going to touch nobody's feet, especially if they have fungus. And he said, no. We put a white sheet over them. And again, whenever you're ready, you let me know and I'll be right there with you. You start by touching their feet because you get an idea of, hey, okay, this is fairly easy. You know that they're not going to jump. They're not going to wake up. They're not going to scream. That's like trauma there, you know, like that. That's just not going to happen. And I said, okay, you know, I'll, I'll let you know. I'll get back to you. Don't hold your breath to it, though. So another week goes by and I finally said, hey, Steve, I think I'm ready. 
you know, I want to get rid of this fear. Like, you know, this is not okay. I've encountered so many families and I can't even go into the viewing room with them because I'm so scared, petrified. So he said, okay, come on. There was this lady. I'll never forget. I still remember as if it was yesterday. You're talking like 13 years now. And there was this lady dressed in a white suit with a big white hat, like those that they wear to church. And she had red nails on, red acrylics. Very beautiful woman. And again, he put a sheet over her feet and he says, start by just touching her feet, kind of squeezing them. And I was, all right, there I go, you know, like, and I started talking to her. I said, please, you know, don't jump up. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to evade your space. I'm not trying to do any of that. I just, I want to get rid of this fear, you know. Slowly but surely, I ended up moving from her feet up to her hands. And I'm like, oh, wow, like they're very, they're very hard and they're very cold. And the reason why is because that's what the embalming fluid does. It makes your skin, you know, your body, period. It makes it kind of hard and then very cold. Obviously, you're in a refrigerator that's 60 degrees, so it's freezing in there. So very cold, very hard, but harmless. And I said, okay, well, you know, this was fairly easy. Well, like I said, as the days, the weeks went on, the owner, which was at this point, I consider her my friend, my friend's grandmother. She said, I really like you. Would you mind going to training, you know, to get certified to do death certificates and also to get your counseling certificate in order to meet with families? That's what you call the funeral home representative that sits with you and basically helps you choose a funeral package for your loved one. That's what they're called. It's a counselor. And yes, you have to go through training because there's a lot of laws, especially in the state of California, for a funeral. Most people think, why does, you know, why does the process take so long? Well, again, there's a lot of laws in place. This isn't like Mexico where your loved one passes today and we have the viewing tonight and the burial the next day. It doesn't work that way. We have to go through a a lengthy process, I would say, with the health department, the doctor's office, or if your loved one passed unexpectedly, non-natural causes. So what we consider natural causes is, you know, cancer or any terminal illness. If they did not pass from that, then it gets turned over to the coroner. So any accident, suicide, if anybody was shot, you have to go through the office of the coroner depending on which county you passed away. And that's another thing. It does matter where you pass away. If you passed away in San Bernardino, it would be San Bernardino County Coroner. If you pass away in Riverside, it would be Riverside County Coroner, Los Angeles, so on and so forth. So it's a lengthy process, you know, to do death certificates. It's not easy. And in order to bury or cremate somebody... You have to have the death certificate already registered and what's called a disposition permit. The disposition permit basically tells the crematory operator, hey, this is legal. You're free to cremate this person. Or it tells the cemetery of the family's choice, hey, we did the process. We abide by the laws and you are free to bury, you know, so-and-so's loved one. So again, it is a process and I agreed. I said, heck yeah, you know, the more knowledge, the better, right? So I went through the process of getting certified to do death certificates with the state of California and I went through the process of getting my counseling certificate to be a counselor with the funeral home. So all in all, that's just a quick little glimpse as to how I was introduced into the funeral home business. Thank you so much, you guys, again, for taking the time to listen to me rant. Next week's episode is going to be about the very first, I wouldn't say ghost encounter, but I did have an encounter. You don't want to miss out. Thank you so much again. Have a good night. God bless you guys.